What's up, guys? My name is Andreas. I'm the COO and founder of Space Affairs. Welcome to the first uh, episode of the Space Affairs uh, web series, web streaming series. And today I want to explain you a little bit more about what we are doing um, since 20 years. Uh, first of all, I want to show you a little bit more specific about a zero-g flight. Uh, what is a zero-g flight, how it happens, how it works. I can tell you honestly, even people who are uh, participating on such zero-g flights in the last uh, couple of years, um, they do not understand it very well for how it works. So. Uh, it is easy to explain. Um, I can also give you the suggestion to visit our website because that what I show you today is visible on the website. Uh, the website is www.spaceaffairs.com and uh, there is a menu. Um, you can see uh, floaters and in the floaters there is an, uh, an option for to see it here, zero G freestyle. And when you uh, press on uh, zero G freestyle, you will come to the section of the floaters. So that means um, everything is explained there, but today I want to explain you a little bit more about the specifics of a zero G flight. So let's start. When you click then on the uh, menu, you will see a visual. What will start in the left corner here, that is the Illusion 76 MDK, what we are using since nearby 20 years. These planes are owned by the Gagarin Cosmo Training Center. Uh, it's located in Star City. It's approximately 40 kilometers in the northeast direction of uh, Moscow. So we fly then from Tchaikovsky Air Base. Uh, Tchaikovsky Air Base is directly nearby uh, Star City. And on this military uh, air base are also the planes of the GCTC um, uh, situated. So also the Illusion 76 MDK. MDK means, uh, by the way, uh, flying laboratory. And uh, the GCTC is using that planes for uh, training cosmonauts for getting in touch with weightlessness. So the planes are the biggest wide body aircraft in the world who are flying parabola. So let's start. You see here, it is uh, lighten. Uh, this is the first phase of a zero G flight. That means the, after the takeoff from Tchaikovsky, uh, the plane is heading to a specific airspace. Uh, it's flying around 20, 25 minutes. This is a secured airspace where no commercial airliners or private aircraft are flying. So because doing a um, parabolic flight means you need a lot of space in a 3D environmental. So it is not good when uh, you're doing parabolic flights and there is another aircraft in the area, so in the region. So it's not possible, so they fly to this area. After reaching altitude of 6,000 meters, um, the instructors on board uh, will start with preparations with people. First of all, you get rid of the parachute, what you have uh, where... Uh, during the takeoff because the answer is simple. There are no seats on the Illusion and so in case of an emergency you have to get out So after this is completed uh, you will reach the uh, uh, Altitude and uh, I can show you a little bit about that how it looks from the front cone uh, of the Illusion you see here uh, this is a uh, sequence what was filmed uh, after reaching 6,000 meters uh, with the Illusion 76. Yeah, you see this is filmed by GoPro camera and the uh, front cone of the Illusion. So it, it looks like a normal air, air uh, line of flight. Yeah? There is no difference. Okay. Now it gets serious. Um, the next phase is the so-called ascent phase. That means that the plane is going with full throttle uh, nose up 47 degrees in the ascent phase and during that phase it happens that the uh, weight 
on board of the craft is the double of the weight what we normally have under normal conditions walking on Earth. Means when you're 80 kilograms uh, in weight, you have then at that moment 160 kilograms in weight. And that for duration between 20 and 25 seconds. It depends on the situation of the day. So the plane is heating to up and the center of gravity is below the plane. So that means that all uh, uh, people and all participants, the pilots, materials and all of that is affected by this 2G. And uh, I can tell you honestly, you are, fly you are lying on the floor very flat. I will show you that here, <clears throat> how that looks. So these guys try to do push-ups under the 2G phase, but uh, when they are 80 kilograms, they now have to push against 160 kilograms. And uh, that is definitely not such uh, 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 easy. Uh, I can show you another video. So you can look now out to the left wing side and you see one of the engines and here you see uh, how this 47 degree angle of attack looks like when you would out uh, when you would uh, look out of the window so uh, especially you see here the horizon turning to left and now we know what does it mean uh, to uh, heat up with 47 degree of uh, angle of attack it is not a fighter jet it is a huge aircraft uh, here you see another video also uh, done from the front cone of the Ilyushin and you see nose up, full throttle, 47 degree angle of attack and now the 2G phase is starting means the, the, the um, gravity is affecting you two times of that what is normally uh, up in uh, normal condition on when you're working on Earth. So this is the ascent phase. Um, by reaching the altitude between 8,000 and 8,500 meters, the pilots will throttle down the engine. So that is a free fall. That means the aircraft is following a specific flight path and the engines are not on such high power that the aircraft is following the own flight trajectory um, instrumented by the pilots. So they put down the nose a little bit and uh, from that moment when the engines are uh, never on full thrust, the weightlessness phase started. So it is especially happening the weightlessness phase is happening here between these uh, moments so it is not only during the descent it is on the on the upper parts of the parabola i will show you that in the video how it looks in different angles here you see a very specific video what was done from one of the instructors of the uh, Gagarin Cosmo Training Center, Anatoly Zapruskov. He is the lead uh, instructor of that all. And he put a GoPro on his head and uh, he was then moving during the zero-g phase from the cockpit in the upper level to the free floating area in the lower uh, level. I will show you that here. Now you see releasing engines back and Anatoly start to float yeah downwards to the huge uh, cargo bay and you see people uh, that is the first parabola what they are doing so they had to get a little bit familiar with this situation and I can you honestly it is totally worse it is totally worse because from one moment to another you are yeah, you are never bound on earth and so um, this is a really strange feeling when you see your feet um, uh, up to the uh, ceiling and the head is down to the uh, the soil but you don't know what is up and what is down what is front and what is back uh, here you can see also uh, this view from out of the left window uh, back to our engines and you see now from this moment on everything is weightless on board of the craft so you see that the Ilyushin, instructed by pilots, are f is following a specific uh, flight path. And I think I mentioned that this is called the Kepler parabola from mathematics. You can uh, uh, check that uh, on Google and probably you remember your math class or your physics class. And so uh, in this phase, everything is weightless. 
uh, the mass is still there because the only thing what happens is that the center of gravity is moving away. So here is also another video what I will show to you. It is also made uh, from the front cone of the Ilyushin. Yeah, you see now that uh, after the uh, ascent, the machine is uh, going into descent. Now they are in a free fall, and especially in that moment, it happens that everything is weightless on board. So again, the mass is still there. Why it is called zero g? Because it's, uh, it sounds more be uh, more good. Um, gravity is always there. It doesn't matter where you are in the universe. Uh, some people mentioned on YouTube sometimes that as uh, higher you move up from Earth, as to lower uh, the um, the uh, uh, gravity as that is uh, not right. Um, when you follow some uh, rocket launches, for example, um, you can see that the G forces attract the, the client, uh, the, the 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 pilots or the astronauts, as long as the engine is on. That means uh, during staging, depends on the rocket, could be that they have a short moment of uh, zero G and then the second stage is ignited and they will be pushed back in the seats again. But the real free fall they reach when they are in orbit and that takes between seven and eight minutes. Then they are in free fall. It is an unpowered flight. And so everything is weightless and this happens, doesn't matter where you are. For example, when you fly from the Earth to the Moon and uh, after you uh, went to orbit and then you will have the uh, uh, flight pass to the Moon uh, and the uh, rocket engine is powered on to push you out of the Earth orbit in the direction of the Moon, then you have the G-forces again. Yeah, you have the G-forces again until you are in free fall condition uh, back again. So it is physics. So what's up next? Okay, by ending of the zero G phase, you will go back to the uh, two G phase again. This two two G phase is the same as the ascending. Now we are in descending. That means everything what is on board is going back to the double of weight of normal. You can see that here in the video, Boris from Switzerland. Yeah, now he is flat uh, on the soil and he is talking about that it is really hard because 2G is not a lot, but it depends on the duration. So it is, when you drive with a roller coaster, it can happen that you have plus 10G or plus 12G, but only for a second. Now you uh, feel this uh, 2G for uh, 20 seconds or 25 seconds. Yeah, you can see that here also going back to normal uh, with a few out of the left uh, wing side. So after the plane is reaching the horizontal flight pass, uh, the 1G, the normal condition is coming back. Yeah, and here also uh, the video uh, done uh, uh, from the front, co front uh, nose, the cone. Uh, so you can see uh, as the aircraft is going back to normal horizontal flight conditions. So between the parabolas, uh, there are three to five minutes each. That means under normal conditions, we are flying for experienced flights. I mean, with fun clients who want to have this experience, uh, we fly 10 parabolas, could be also 12, but sometimes uh, it depends on the day. Uh, they simulate uh, Moon G and Mars G. Moon G is one sixth of Earth's gravity, and Mars G is one third uh, of gravity of Earth. So mostly we are flying 12 parabolas. So what's up next? Uh, it's going back to normal flight condition. It's the 1G phase, and as mentioned, now this plane is flying between three and five minutes straight ahead until the next um, uh, phase is starting, and I will show you this again here. Uh, going up normal flight, then to the, the 2G phase, then uh, uh, throttle back the engines, tip down uh, the nose, uh, following the uh, Kepler parabola, everything is weightless. Then uh, uh, to the 2G phase again, the descending phase, pull back the plane to normal flight pass, and then you are under 1G again. 
So you can see that also here, uh, have a watch to our G-force meter. Uh, it is also shown there. Now you are under 1G. Now in the ascent phase, you are under 2G. In the 0G phase, you have no G. It is uh, 0G. Then during the descent phase, you have the 2G again. And back to normal flight, you have 1G. So I still hope that you uh, understand now a little bit more better how a zero-g flight is working. And uh, um, I th hope that we will see you next year during a zero-g flight. This year it seems that we can't do it uh, because of the pandemic. The travel restrictions are up and even the borders are reopened uh, and there are special uh, precautions for uh, people getting outside, uh, have social distance, avoiding big crowds. A zero G flight is not doable under that condition because all the time people get in close contact, even with the instructors. So there's, I think, no opportunity for this year to do the flights because also in winter times we do not fly because uh, the weather conditions, we need good weather conditions up in the air between 6,000 and 9,000 meters. Uh, these flights can only be flown on site. It means that it's not automated. And so under normal conditions in the year, we do not uh, do zero-g flights between November and April. And so I still hope that we will be back in zero-g latest in next year, April 2021. So that's it for today. I still hope you liked it. If you like it, give us give us a thumb up. Uh, give your comments in the section below. Uh, if you need more information, please contact us again, www.spaceaffairs.com. All the contact details are giving. Visit, visiting Facebook, visiting Twitter, and also, of course, here on YouTube. Thanks a lot, and be safe, and fly safe. <laughs>